Why, hello. What is your big dream for your life? It could be playing a professional sport, or it could be winning an Olympic gold medal, or it could be playing in an awesome band, or it could be becoming a lawyer, or a farmer, or even a famous actor or actress in Hollywood or Broadway. And you know, it doesn't have to be something totally serious. It could be baking the world's largest chocolate chip cookie, or becoming a famous sports fanatic. Or it could be a big dream to rule over the other bundles of wheat and even the sun, the moon, and 11 stars. Wait, what? How is that a big dream? Well, sometimes our dreams don't make much sense, and sometimes we only have a sense of what direction our life should be heading in, but we don't really have any specifics. Which is perfectly fine. For some of us, that's how God works in our lives. And sometimes God is just waiting for the right time or a little nudge to help us find our big dream. So no matter where you find yourself, God does have a plan for your life. And it's totally awesome. Well, back to this crazy dream with the wheat and the stars in it. There was a young man in the Bible who had this crazy dream. And at the time when he had the dream, he had no idea what God was going to do with it. He was just happy to have a dream specifically for him about his life and specifically about where he was heading. And maybe that's where you find yourself today with an idea, a dream, or even a glimpse of where you see yourself in the future. Well, today we're going to take a look at this young man's dream journey to take a look at obstacles that we may face and ways that we can prepare ourselves for the moment we step into our dream. So let's start at the beginning when the dream was first revealed to this young man named Joseph. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 37 verses 5 through 11. One night Joseph had a dream and when he told his brothers about it they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, So you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and the way he talked about them. Soon, Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. And this time, he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I just thank you for this opportunity to share this story about Joseph's dream. And God, I just pray that you would speak through me. Amen. Okay, so picture with me, if you will, a young man, about 17 years old, surrounded by all of his brothers, 11, 11 in all, 10 older and one younger and he just shared this amazing dream with them about him pretty much ruling over them and them submitting to him and you know if i was joseph i'd be pretty excited right about now everything seems to be going my way and you know according to my dream i have a very bright and exciting future ahead of me yeah there's a few haters but who doesn't have opposition to their dream well, if you can't tell, Joseph was a bit arrogant and was probably thinking that within the next year, his dream would come true. But he didn't realize how big his dream really was and the plan that God had for his life. And this was Joseph's biggest mistake. He didn't take into account what it would take for his big dream to happen. But God did. God had a plan all along to prepare Joseph for his big dream. And it wasn't always pleasant, but God promised to be with him through it all. Well, after gloating to his brothers about his dream, they got to thinking. 
They had to find a way to crush Joseph's dreams. Their first plan was to kill him. But the eldest spoke up. He was secretly planning to rescue Joseph later after the brother's wrath had been satisfied. And his suggestion was that they should throw him in a pit and leave him for dead. Well, what ended up happening later that afternoon, Joseph is coming out to meet his brothers. And they grab him and they throw him in the pit like planned. But then they sat down for lunch and they see a caravan of traders coming their way. And they start thinking, why not make some money out of this deal? So what they did is they sold Joseph as a slave, making sure that Joseph was now out of their lives. The big dream was taken care of. Well, even though Joseph's brothers had thought they had killed his dream, God had a plan, and God stayed with Joseph every step of the way. You see, when you start sharing your dream, there will be some opposition. There will be haters because there are people out there that are jealous of your dream and jealous of your ambition to actually go on that journey. And there might be days or nights when you lose all hope. And I'm sure that's where Joseph was when he ended up in Egypt as a slave at rock bottom. But do you know what happens at rock bottom? All false hope, all false strength that you find in yourself is knocked away. And that's when God comes in. God can fill us with strength and hope to move forward on our journey, even if we shouldn't feel like it or even want to. When we find ourselves in those rock-bottom moments, that's when we find our true source of hope and strength in God. Because as much as we want to see our dream happen, God wants to see us succeed a gazillion times more. Our big dream is the whole reason God created us. And you know what? God is always with us always cheering us on. But sometimes he uses drastic things in our lives to remind us of that. At least that's what he did in Joseph's life. So Joseph ends up in Egypt and finds himself as a slave to Potiphar, the captain of the palace guard, an officer to Pharaoh, which was blessing number one. God handpicked where Joseph would end up in Egypt. And his brothers had no idea at the time, but it was a part of God's plan to bring Joseph to Egypt. And so blessing number two, Joseph was not alone when he was a slave in Egypt. The Bible tells us that the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything that he did, which led to blessing number three. Potiphar noticed that the Lord was with Joseph and ended up making Joseph his personal assistant, putting Joseph in charge of the entire household. And so Potiphar only had to worry about what he was going to eat. You see, what's crazy is Joseph was succeeding as a slave when he should have been sitting there feeling sorry for himself and sulking in the fact that his own brothers had sold him into slavery. Instead of that, he was thriving. You think God had something to do with that? Well, life continues going great for a while for Joseph, but there is a problem that he runs into, and it's Potiphar's wife. Let's just say she was strongly attracted to Joseph and tried everything in her power to make him fall into temptation. So Joseph ends up being framed by Potiphar's wife and is thrown into prison where the king's prisoners were held in Pharaoh's prison, which was God's blessing number four. God again directed where Joseph would end up. And, you know, just as God had blessed Joseph as a slave, God also blessed Joseph Joseph as a prisoner, which was blessing number five. In no time, the warden put Joseph in charge of the other prisoners and everything that happened in the prison. The Bible even says the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. You see, God had not forgotten Joseph. God had not left Joseph for dead, leaving him by the wayside through all of these horrible things. Instead, God was with him and was directing him through these hard times. And God was blessing him amidst all of these troubles. This should not have been happening, but it was. 
God had a plan, and even if Joseph didn't realize it, it was all preparing him for his big dream. So sometimes in our lives, bad things happen. Hard times happen. It's a part of life. But when these things do happen, God is always with us and is directing us through them. Just like in Joseph's life, God placed him in Potiphar's home and placed him in Pharaoh's prison so that Joseph's big dream could come true. God had a plan all along to see this happen. So how does Joseph's big dream actually come to happen? How do all these things fit together and how does he make it out of prison? Well, when Joseph was in prison, God gave him the ability to interpret dreams. And it just so happened that Pharaoh had a crazy dream that no one could figure out. So Pharaoh's cupbearer, who had previously been put in prison, remembered that Joseph could interpret dreams. So they called Joseph up from prison and presented him to Pharaoh to interpret the dream. And Joseph did. And what the dream said was there was going to be seven years of abundance followed by seven years of famine. And when Pharaoh heard this, he was devastated. And he had no idea what to do of how he was going to save his people. And that's when Joseph stepped up. And he advised Pharaoh that they should find someone to oversee the food over these next 14 years so they would have food throughout the famine. And Pharaoh, he was so impressed with Joseph's advice that within a moment he was like, Joseph, you are the wisest person that I know. You're going to be my governor. You're going to oversee all of the food just as you have advised. And not only that, you're also going to be my number two guy. And what's really cool about being Pharaoh's number two is that anybody who would bow down before Pharaoh was also to bow down before Joseph. So you remember his dream with the sun and the moon and the stars and the wheat all bowing down before him? Well, it's coming for full circle now. And what's really kind of cool there's another part of the story after this where his family comes in and they don't recognize who he is and they bow down before him. And the whole reason that God had this plan in place for Joseph to come to Egypt and end up in front of Pharaoh was to save his family from the famine. Joseph's family was the tribe of Israel, which is pretty much the whole family that the Bible follows. So without Joseph going to Egypt, we won't have many stories. So anyways, I want to encourage you today. Your big dream isn't going to happen overnight. And if it does, God has been working in your life all along without you even knowing it. But our big dream is actually a journey with God by our side. And I want to encourage you with three things today. One, God is always with you. So make sure that you're firmly rooted in your relationship with God so that you can see that he's always there with you. And then those moments when we're not as close with God, he's still there with us. And number two, trust God through the tough times. Trust that God knows what your big dream is and what it will look like. And trust that God knows exactly what you need and where you need to go to have your big dream come true. Just trust him. And number three, be ready. Be ready when the time comes to step into your big dream. Joseph had many years to contemplate and prepare himself when he stepped up and gave that advice to Pharaoh. So prepare yourself and be ready. God has great plans for each and every one of us here today. And I want to encourage you this afternoon or later on today, take some time to sit down with God and draw a picture of your big dream. And you know, you might not have a full picture of what your big dream might be. Sometimes God gives us bits and pieces, like a one step at a time deal. So maybe there's just one thing on your mind that you want to accomplish right now. Go with it. Maybe that's where God is leading you right now. 
And finally, I'd like to encourage you, after you have a chance to draw your big dream, share it with someone and hang it up somewhere that you're going to see it um, every day just to remind you that God loves you and God has a plan and a big dream for your life. And what's really awesome is God is going to be with you through it all until completion. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I just thank you so much for the big dream that you have for each and every one of us. And God, I just pray that you would continue preparing us and working in our lives to prepare us for the next step in our journey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.